Hello and welcome. My name is Hans Gutbrod. I'm working for CRC and again today I'm going to show you um, a small and useful trick for working with SPSS so that you can work with our data set. Now the data set includes three countries but sometimes you just want to look at one country and maybe within the country you just want to look at one particular group. How do you do that? Well let's go to the variable here country and then let's look here at the values, at the value labels. We have one for Armenia, two for Azerbaijan, and three for Georgia. Let's remember three for Georgia if we want to look at Georgia itself. Then we go to data and select cases. Now we don't want all the cases. We want cases only if a particular condition is satisfied. And here country B1, if that equals 3, we have all these operators down here as well, yeah. That's, that's the cases we want selected. Now the cases that haven't been selected, we want filtered, we don't want them deleted. Yeah, that would be, otherwise they're gone out of the data set altogether. And so one quick way of checking whether this has worked is that we just go across. And here we see cases that have not been filtered. And here we see cases that have been filtered, yeah, over here. Now, maybe you want to specify that a little further and just look at people in rural environments. And so let's look here, settlement type, value labels, one, rural, urban, capital. Okay, let's say just countryside. And we do the same, select cases, go here again. By the way, you can also type in the variable in case you need to scroll down too far. So sometimes it can just help if you remember the variable that you need to type in here. And here then are all the operators. This, for example, means does not equal. And this means or, it looks a little strange rather than a slash. And this here is what's called the ampersand. That stands for and, for also, and settlement type, V3 equals one rural environments. Continue. Here again, just click OK. And then Let's try something. I've already got a variable selected here in the frequencies. Has the respondent been a victim of a crime within the last year? This is just the people in the countryside, of course, in Georgia only. And here we have the output. Now notice that there's something here, something small called system. Yeah, these are some missing values. And these just turn up with individuals. There's a, there's a neat way of stripping them out. I'm just going to show you. Um, this has to do with our, the structure of our questionnaire. I'm not going to explain it with the individual and the household part. It's a little complex. You may want to look it up in the documentation. It's a quick way of stripping these out. Oops, that was the wrong one. I didn't want that. Apologies. Happens all the time. Hopefully it gives you a sense of realism. Okay, here select cases. And the way you strip out these uh, system cases of this non-response that's still embedded, let's put another ampersand here. And then we take the variable J1, that is, stands for unemployment. And if that's greater than zero, so here, greater than zero, then you will not get any non-response anymore. I realize it's a little complex as that you, you want to look it up. See, you see here, there's, there's practically no missing values anymore as compared to up here. Now, remember, you can look at any subgroup you want to. You can look at just the people in the countryside or just women or just people that pray every day um, and compare them and just look at their particular type of responses. Now, the next thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to compare two groups to each other. And this is what we're going to show you in the next installment. Hope you'll join us for that one. 
and that you find this both useful and a little bit refreshing.